Equity Guru, Investor Roundtable, Yowza. I'm Rob, living in the penthouse. <laughs> Thank you very much. And today we're talking about Cantab Therapeutics. This is medical cannabis for sleep, for pain. And they got a nifty little Canadian stock exchange handle, symbol, pill, P-I-L-L. -L. Larry Latowski is the chief executive officer, Ossifer. I wasn't drinking Ossifer. Uh, let's go down to Chris. We got Chris, we got Michelle, and we've got uh, Galen today down there in the corner. But we're going to start with Chris to talk about one of his favorite talk topics, medical in parentheses, cannabis. I thought you were going to say redheads. Um, yeah, so I've, I've dealt with uh, Kentab for quite a while. Yeah, they were a client of ours, I guess, a year ago. Um, we talked about their patented process. Basically, what I like about Cantab is there's a, there's a bunch of cannabis companies out there, right? The, they'll do some gel tabs, they'll do some edibles, they'll do weed, they'll do pre-rolls, blah, blah, blah. But for each of those SKUs, um, none of them own the rights to the SKU, right? They don't own the intellectual property. Cantab owns, uh, owns the intellectual property of the hard-pressed pill, which in the pharmaceutical world is pretty, you know, regular sort of thing. But to use it for delivery of cannabis products, they have the IP. So that makes them really interesting to me. Um, I, along the way of us telling people about their stock, stock went on a nice run. Um, in fact, I, I know that at least one uh, entity contacted them looking to either buy them or buy their IP. And they decided against doing the deal that's figured that they could do it themselves. Well, um you know best laid plans um the stock has gone on a bit of a fall off as it, let's be honest all cannabis companies have uh it's gone from about a buck back then to about 72 cents now the company has progressed a little bit but i would say probably is not as far along its its process as it would like to be news has been a little slim um they're out there they've got an export license from health canada to send tablets to Australia where some uh, some research was was going on and so some government orders were made to uh, provide pills for that research but there's been a real gap in news for the last couple of months and I'm not exactly sure why or what needs to happen to get this company shaken back into some sort of regular activity but uh, the, the the real issue with the company hasn't been that they don't have a good product or they don't have good intellectual property, or they don't have good people there for mine. The problem was, uh, can you do what you the, the best possible job with your IP yourself, or could be bringing in a larger partner have really accelerated things? I think maybe the company missed an opportunity, and now they're trying to find out like uh, the downside of that hubris. Yeah, it's part of the uh, cannabis doldrums. Uh, yeah. Galen, uh, before we get to the charts, what do we yeah. got? Well, okay, Chris mentioned that there, there has been a bit of an issue in regards to news, and there has. There's been some fairly solid impacts on the company in regards to management. They lost their co-founder to cancer and president uh, to cancer in May of this year, late May. So I think there has been an organizational fallout from this and an inability to sort of like really push forward despite or uh, yeah well considering grief and all that other lovely thing that you have to work through but it's a figurehead within the company that pushes things forward so i have a feeling that they're trying to find their feet still yeah. they've also run into some other bad occurrences and more or less bad luck they teamed up with a company called metafarm um, who they sold uh, or purchased sorry a bunch of distillate from uh, for a couple hundred thousand bucks uh, way back when, I think back in March or something like that, and basically sold them or gave them a bunch of pills, hoping that those pills would be sold through Metafarm to their customers. Metafarm did not execute. Metafarm still has all those pills on their shelves, and unfortunately, Metafarm has an agreement to give them back all their pills. So they're Ooh. doing that. Uh, I think probably one of the things that is plaguing CanTab right now is not, as Chris said, their, their intellectual property or the uh, 
the ability to regulate both the delivery and also uh, the, the, the dosage rates and, and reliability of those dosage rates combined with bio, bioavailability, which has never been a strong suit for cannabis in the medical community. This is something that really pushes forward. And as Chris and I have both said very early on in the cannabis revolution, that really the place where medical cannabis would ex excel was in the lab. It wasn't going to be given out with oils. It wasn't going to be produced with plants. It had to be measurable. It had to be empirical. It had to come out as a doctor prescription, not just an anecdotal delivery. So this company is actually bringing that to fruition. Now, I think they had a bit of the wind taken out of them because basically now they have to take all those pills back and they still owe Metafarm, farm, excuse me, for that 200 grand of distillate, which they have put into these pills, which have yet to be sold. They are now attempting to sell them on their own, which I think at this point is probably one of the steps they should be taking. This industry is plagued by second and third party deals where here you take this and distribute it for us as part of your larger portfolio and nobody ever follows through on that shit. They just they use it as a packing item for their for their portfolio. Uh, so I think CanTab would be better uh, suited to assume the sales and distribution on their own, which they're attempting to do. But that also requires a build out both logistically and operationally to make that happen. So there could be a more of a waiting time period. And as I yep. said, there, I think there's a bit of a leadership void. Not that I'm saying Larry Litowski isn't there and performing. It's just that that hits kind of hard when you have a co-founder of a company go down, especially so tragically, uh, so soon uh, or so recently. So I think they're a bit in sort of, I don't know, again, trying to find their feet. I, 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 I like the company, but as Chris said, it, it's spinning wheels right now or not even spinning. It's just kind of sitting there. So I'm waiting for something solid to take place. And with those bad news hits, they've got a bit to get over. Yeah. So no, no real news since the spring. Um, I got some buddies in New Jersey that can distribute this stuff, by the way, if they're really maybe, desperate. Maybe you should get in contact with them. <laughs> got some them. buddies at Rick Beach will do the same thing. <laughs> uh, Michelle, what are, we, what are we doing with the charts? Are they just as quiet as everything else? Uh, they're a bit quiet, yeah, Rob. And like you just mentioned, more than uh, in more than three months without any news release. And um, the stock is just ranging. And it's been ranging, actually, since uh, July uh, I kid you not, but the support is 69 cents, um, exactly, 0.69. Nice. Um, that is the support level that we are holding. And as you can see here, uh, one, two, three, four, five times we tried to break and close below 69, but uh, the price was a <laughs> bit up. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're holding that support, uh, but we need something to give us a breakout. And I'm looking at above 80 cents here for that breakout. Um, if not, then... Very easily, the stock could maybe just bounce around here for a bit. And if there's no good catalyst or no good reason for investors to to, uh, to pile in, uh, we can continue to make new lower highs uh, and continue that downtrend. But I think um, it's just it's just cannabis in general. Um, you know, Rob, you and I, we've talked about it about like some of the stocks look like they were ready to uh, to base and bounce, but instead they they sort of sold off. And I just think um, that sector needs a needs a bit of a push, but then the other way to look at it is if, if you're still bullish on cycles, uh, maybe now's the time to pick up really good cheap cannabis plays and um, load up before the next upturn. Yeah, it would be a long hold, but it might be worth it. Um, right. If people watch the, the investor roundtable on a regular basis, daily basis, they'll know that recently we've had a lot of just kind of hold, sit, wait and see type situations we might have another one here so let's go around the horn and start with chris with what do we do with my money if anything uh I, i'm not someone to throw in cash when i feel like the the end of the bad times isn't over um and you know not that this isn't a bad company i certainly made money from this company earlier in the year and i think that a lot of people who read our website did the same um but it has really trailed off and I don't see anything pointing to it to say the good times are just around the corner. Um, I think there needs to be a strategy. It needs to be a public strategy. It needs to be maybe some uh, some new names brought in to give things a bit of a, a rev. Um, we know this story. Ideally, in a public markets company, you want to know the story, but you also want to feel like there's some stuff that you don't know that's coming right around the corner. And I don't have that feeling with Cantab right now. 
maybe that's wrong. Maybe they're working furiously. There are squirrels hiding away chestnuts or something, but um, I, I don't see evidence of it in the trading. I don't see evidence of it in the news. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm rooting for them. I want them to, to deliver. I just, if I'd been thinking the same thing three months ago, I'd be really pissed off right now holding onto the stock. So I'm not putting anything in until I see activity, uh, the engine revving uh, going forward. Uh, Galen? Uh, somewhat in the same, well, actually in the same area as Chris in regards to whether or not I want to put money on this. I mean, there has been some action recently in regards to announcements that they're bringing in new processing equipment, but this is all building product and we've already seen the product has yet to be distributed to sex successfully. And that's, that's the real uh, magic to this mix is selling it. You, you can't just build it and put it on your shelf. You got to get it out the door. So when that starts happening, when I start to see traction in that regard, then I'd be more interested in seeing what's going on. And as Chris said, it, it, there needs to look like there's activity. And right now I think there's a bit of a lull. So yeah, I'm, I'm waiting and I don't think the bad times are over yet. They've got it. They've got some stuff they need to deal with. It's, it's frustrating because you know, the product is actually one that I would use, right? Like I, I'm not averse to cannabis use. I think it's great. Uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm all for it in terms of helping me sleep in terms of a lot of beneficial, uh, of therapeutic side, but I don't want to smoke it. And edibles are up and down, they're inconsistent, and gel tabs are, you know, the same. A hard press pill gives you consistency in a product that people my age and older will consume like they do echinacea, like they do vitamin D. Um, so I'm actually really gunning for these guys to get this product to a place where it's on the shelf next to the Flintstones vitamins. It's just baffling to me that it's taken so long. Uh, Michelle, you might have been the one guy with a small inkling to try a dip. Uh, you know, oh. you, you can buy that dip here if you want to play that support, but I, I wouldn't do it just yet. Um, I would want to see, again, just overall cannabis sector getting a bit of a bid before we do that. Um, just not much interest in that sector for now. Um, and as you know, as Chris and Galen both said, we just need that little catalyst. We need a reason to buy uh, the stock. And if we do break out above 80 cents, then maybe I'll get um, uh, interested in the stock, but we just need good news or a uh, sector push. Um, likely gonna come from the US side with uh, legalization there. Um, but that's what I'd be waiting for. As Chris said, you know, I do like the product as well. And I think if we do see cannabis regain some interest and popularity with investors, uh, this will be one of the top picks to put on my watch list. Any belief in uh, an annual cyclical for no other reason uh, type cycle? Like for example, it was last early February, late January where cannabis went bonkers yep. again and then faded. That happens every year. It's happened yeah. every year since 2014. So yeah. same, same ballpark in terms of the calendar, right? Yeah, and I'm just showing you guys here, this is the chart of the MSOS. So this is the US uh, cannabis ETF and uh, what we're, we're testing you know we're about to test the uh, recent lows in september and uh, you know if that breaks uh we still have some room to go yeah and look, look at that, that, that go back on that spike yeah i can't it's a little tiny what i'm looking at but that's those are by month right uh this is by day so you're probably looking february march time you said yeah, january yeah yeah that's yep. exactly it. january february beginning of february this year we have this nice yep. little clock same thing. Yep. All right. Well, another thing to think about, folks, we can't guarantee uh, what we're telling you is going to be completely accurate at all times. You have to do your own research, make your own decisions. Past performance does not guarantee future results. Do a little homework and uh, check out the uh, pill symbol on the Canadian Stock Exchange. That's CanTab Therapeutics. And this has been with Chris down there and Vichelle and Dover down there, Galen. I'm Rob. We'll see you on the next Equity Guru Roundtable. Come on, Pill. <laughs> <laughs>